How's it going guys? Agent Android here and welcome to a new Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm in my Volts world and I'm in this little shop that I built over by uh, the spawn area and I'm going to be showing you guys some cool uh, features that I have. So far I have a automatic shop system installed which you just press a button right here over here and it brings down the item to the register where you can pick it up which is right down over there. I still have to set up the whole linkage system on the top because I haven't set it, set it up yet and none of the items over here are actually loaded into the dispensers behind this yet. Actually, I don't even have dispensers on these. It's only on the bottom floor. But anyway, um, these are a few items that I have on the top floor and I'm planning on adding more things over here, including some seating and uh, make it a little better in terms of like atmosphere and stuff. So I'm going to be working on this, but I've been working on it for a few days now. And I've also got this uh, light system set up. So all I have to do is flip this switch and I can turn off the lights on the top and on the bottom because there is a uh, bottom floor to this store as well. So let's head on over to the bottom floor using an elevator. This elevator functions on command blocks, so it requires no mods. All you have to do is uh, obtain two command blocks to power this kind of elevator. Of course, you can get three or four or uh, even more command blocks if you want to uh, make a multi-floor uh, elevator. However, this is only a two-floor elevator. So, without further ado, let's close the door, press floor one, and we are on floor one. So as you can see, I have teleported with the uh, coordinates down over here in the chat. So, I'm on the first floor of my store, and some of these are actually already set up, and it all goes down over here into this chest. And apparently I have rotten flesh, because I did not seal off the back. So Alright guys, so we're outside of the store, and I'm going to show you guys one more thing that I have that's really cool about this store. The really cool thing about this door is that it slides inward and opens, so let me do a little demonstration. And as you can see, it functions kind of like a vault door would, so I'm going to make a, I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to make this door, uh, probably in a few episodes after um, I get everything set up, because right now the shop is not symmetrical, it's not complete, I'm still working on a lot of things, but this is just kind of to test out the uh, layout and to test out the design, so I'm going to be working on it and I'm going to be making it better, and once I have everything set up, I will show you guys how to make everything in the shop. Alright guys, so as you can see, we have a diagram of the 4x5 elevator. Now it's 4x5 outside, but only 2x3 inside. So uh, you have this small little space over here where you can stand. Of course, you can make it bigger and uh, make any kind of modifications to this design as you want. However, this is the design that I've chosen to go with, and uh, this box over here really doesn't do anything, so... Uh, it's basically just a little diagram that I made for you guys to show you guys how to make it. You have a light over here. I used refined glowstone. However, you can use anything you want. You could probably also use um, regular glowstone or maybe even a redstone lamp if you want to, as long as it doesn't interfere with the redstone mechanics that power it. All right, so as you can see, we have glass panes over here. There are a total of six glass panes in one elevator unit. We have two over here and two on the sides just like that. And we have two buttons over here as well as two signs. The closed door button is always on the top and the floor two or floor one button would be on the bottom. And of course over here we have the floors. I chose to use emerald ore. However, you can do anything you want. And the body of the elevator typically would be iron blocks. However, you can also do that any way you want to. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to assemble and set up everything into this elevator. As you can see, I have one elevator over here and the other elevator right up here. So this is the entire diagram that I drew out for you guys. Well, not drew, but uh, built out for you guys, rather. I built all of this uh, exactly how it is over here with a little bit of adjustment so that I can clearly show you guys how you should set it up. So these blocks over here, as you can see, we've got yellow wool and we have blue wool down over here. Now, what the yellow wool represents is blocks that you cannot ever place repeaters on. If you place a repeater on any of these blocks, it just won't work. So these blocks over here, the blue blocks, are blocks that you can place a repeater on. Now you don't have to build your elevator system like this. This is just to show you guys which blocks you can and cannot place repeaters on. So as you can see, you could place the repeater on these two blocks and on these three blocks because you're probably going to have to extend the signal over here to reach uh, this bottom block over here that controls the doors. So basically, when you press one button in either of the elevators, both doors open and close. And once you teleport, it will bring you over to here. So give you, it'll give you the effect that the doors open when in fact both doors close at the same time. So if I press the button over here, you could see that those doors also closed. But when you click the second button to teleport you there, uh, the elevator doors are still closed at the same time. So let me just do a little demonstration with these. 
to show you guys that it is in fact set up. I close the door, I press floor two, and the door opens. So that's basically how it works. All right, so let's take a look into the required materials chest. You're gonna need a block of iron to make the body of the elevator. You're also gonna need um, a block for the flooring of the elevator. You're going to need 12 pieces of glass pane. You can use any color you want. You need two pieces of refined glowstone or any other light source, four sticky pistons, um, basically a block for holding up the redstone. You need pieces of redstone, five redstone repeaters, four signs, four buttons, and two command blocks. Now the way this is set up is we have a command block down over here so that it reaches this second button over here. So if I take out the command block, it would be right underneath that piece over there. Now to run the redstone, you need to place a piece of redstone right by the block that has the button for closing the doors. Now the button for closing the doors happens to be right behind this block, which is basically in the middle of the entire elevator setup. So you would find it right over here. You'd place one redstone piece over here, one piece over here, one over there, and a repeater connected up to the uh, piston. Now all of the pistons require one repeater right next to it so that they function properly because I found that if I don't have them, for some reason this one will glitch. It will work, however it will get stuck for no reason. So you always wanna be sure to place a redstone repeater in front of every piston that you put it on. So as you can see, the bottom is also similarly set up. It's uh, pretty standard for both of the designs. All you have to do is connect it down over here and make sure that you can have that you have enough room to um, lead the redstone. If the redstone signal does get weak, you can place the block of uh, the repeater block on either of these blocks or on the three blocks over here. Now to run the redstone up to the second elevator, you're going to want to place a block over here, which is right about at the edge of the elevator, so right over here. You're gonna run it all the way up through here, make it into a short staircase because you don't want to lose signal, because remember, you cannot use repeaters, because if you did, you wouldn't be able to open it the other way. So basically, if I ran a repeater down over here, I would only be able to use the doors from the second elevator and not the first, because the signal would get canceled out. So you have to make it as short as possible, leading all the way over to the second elevator block, and leading the same pattern as we had on the first floor so that it goes by the button that opens and closes the doors and ends over here with the piston that controls the door. Now here is a long range shot of the elevator setup. You may pause the video and take a closer look at the redstone. Now that you have the redstone set up, it's time to set up the command blocks. The command that I used for this is slash TP at P and then I put a bracket LM equals three, which is the limit that the command block serves to target all players in the area which three is about the size that the elevator would cover, so anyone in the elevator would get teleported. And then I put in the uh, coordinates that the command block will send me to. For the first floor elevator, put in the coordinates for the center of the second elevator. And for the second elevator, put in the coordinates for the uh, first floor elevator. Now a helpful thing that you would probably want to do is keep the X and Z coordinates the same and only adjust the uh, Y coordinate because the Y coordinate is the height. If you do not uh, switch either the X or the Z, it will teleport you to the exact same place if you have built the elevator correctly. So basically you won't end up uh, over here or over there. Instead you will remain perfectly in the same place that you were standing. So if I close it over this way, I will end in roughly the same place that I uh, started from on the second floor elevator. So that's all there is to it, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and please be sure to mind that like button down below if you enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.